Tim Collins with Coleman Today. I know with Paul Bussman. Senator, you have survived week one of the legislative session 2017. You look good. You don't look uh, negatively affected at all. Week one was good. Week one's always easy. We don't have any bills to uh, to vote on because you've got to have at least two readings on each bill. So Tuesday and Thursday, we got the readings. So, so you got to listen. Very, yeah, got very easy week. Well, uh, we got to listen to the state of the state from Governor Bentley. As you predicted, uh, he's putting on the push for the prisons. Yeah, and that's that's still a concern. Uh, you know, we have many issues with prisons, uh, not just the overcrowding in prisons. Uh, one of the big issues we got is mental health. We got a, a large quantity of prisoners who are in prison right now uh, simply because they've got mental health issues, and, and we've got to uh, identify those and we've got to address those. Uh, we've got to address those in the same bill that we address the prisons. Now, whether they're going to be willing to do that or not, I don't know. But I'm going to I'm going to push to see if we can get some mental health issues taken care of as well. Hopefully, maybe get some uh, judicial sentencing issues in that as well. Uh, I just think it's a bigger package than just building more prisons because we can build and build and build, but. Uh, that's not going to stop the flow of inmates, especially if they if it's mental health related. Well, you know, last week we talked about this, and then we did the, the week first week video, and I was pleasantly surprised. I got lots of comments, people messaging me about supporting you and your version of this. Uh, everybody's pro helping mental health. In other words, it was like don't necessarily spend all that money on buildings, spend it, spend it on the people. Oh, I think you're absolutely right. If you talk to uh, any of the sheriffs, you talk to any of the chief of police. Uh, you know, multiple situations occur uh, in in Alabama and in Coleman County, especially that that uh, you know are mental health related, uh, and they get themselves into a situation where they feel like they've got no other alternative, and and they do something that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And so we got to deal with that first, and then and then we can we can see what kind of prison system we need. Gotcha. Well, I was noticing in the various bills that came up, one that interests me. It's about autism. And it's kind of subtle, but when you start thinking about it, it's really an important bill, isn't it? It's very important. And and this bill has been around uh, off and on for the last two or three years. Uh, you know, the the children with, with autism are not necessarily covered by uh, by health insurance because it's a, it's a development disorder. Uh, unfortunately, that is a, a bad situation when, when parents who have to spend twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year uh, for care for their kids, the, the care does not happen. Uh, and so we have these children that really could benefit and really could uh, grow uh, with good intensive treatment. And so that is one of the issues right now that's, that's in, the, in the legislature. Uh, you know, the insurance companies don't want to pay for it. I can understand that. But, but I also understand that if, if these children don't get the care they need and that care has to occur very early at a, in an early age, uh, you know, they're going to be on the system for the rest of their life. And, and that, in the long run, is going to cost us a whole lot more. Uh, so I'm going to continue to work with the, with the folks with autism. I think we can get a, a very good bill that would, would help them with insurance coverage. And, and then I think we can, we can improve the situation with these kids. That will affect schools. That will affect a whole lot of things. Absolutely. I'm going to switch gears from, well, I guess we call it uh, the mental autistic health world, to something much more tangible, a thing called the Monument Bill. It seemed like to me, I mean, it's not my job to make a judgment. The original bill seemed worthwhile, but as you read it, it, it they're talking about uh, schools, roads. I mean, can you, can you explain what the bill is and what your concerns might be there? Well, the bill first is a, is, is a protection bill opposed to prevent just monuments from being taken down, uh, from names from being changed just for at the whim of, of a certain group. Uh, and, and that's a very important thing. You know, history to us is very important. And, and we have a long history and, a, and we have many people that have served uh, over the years that, de that deserve that monument. And so I think it's very important that we protect our monuments. Uh, in this bill, however, they've added roads and they've added schools and they've added some other things that bring me to a, a little bit of pause. Uh, and so we got to get those issues worked out. Uh, the bill prevents any addition, changes, modifications to these buildings because they declare them monuments. Uh, and in my, in Coleman County and in many of the counties in my district, the schools are over 50 years old. And so that would classify them as a monument. Uh, and then you would have to go through a long process to adjust, to add on, to modify or to repair uh, these buildings. And so we've got to get that clear. I think the basic, like you said, the basic bill is a good bill. 
Uh, we've got to protect our monuments, but we don't want to open the door so far that, that it makes it unworkable. Well, it seems like it'd be a quagmire. Let's say we've got uh, Good Hope School over here, and they decide, well, we need a new roof. If this bill passes as written, that means if they were proceeding, they'd be defacing a monument. That makes no sense. That would be absolutely correct, and and that's the part that concerns me the most. You know, these bills are are very good bills. The intent are very good bills, uh, but you got to get to the details of what they're going to do. And and if if I can't go in as a superintendent and make repairs or make changes to a building without having to go through a process that is outside my my authority, that that's going to be a that's going to be a challenging situation for them. And so, like I said, we want to protect the monuments. We want to protect the names on monuments uh, and those type things, but but we don't want to expand it so far where it becomes unworkable for for normal everyday operations. Makes sense. Now, last week you talked about one of the things you were interested in as far as new legislation involved universities and the requirement if you live within a certain distance from the university, you still have to go to the dormitory. That's and uh, your your idea is to extend that out where people could drive to to school rather than be forced to be in dormitories. You got some activity on that. Uh, more challenging than you thought, perhaps, huh? I think we got uh, a tremendous amount of attention from higher education, uh, and we expected that. Uh, you know, they do not want to expand that boundary. Uh, they do not want uh, uh, to have children driving or students driving in uh, from forty or fifty miles or 60 miles. Uh, but to me, it's it's an unfair situation for our rural districts. We have no universities in my district, uh, and our children have to drive to those places. Uh, for instance, if a child wants to go to UAH, for example, uh, and wants to drive there three days a week to go to class, that child has to live in the dorm. Uh, to me, that puts an undue burden on, on the rural family. Uh, and, and so what we're trying to do is trying to expand that radius to 60 to 75 miles, uh, to, from 30 to 60 or 75 miles, uh, and try to incorporate some, some flexibility for our rural families to give them some help where it doesn't cost them so much to go to college. Makes sense. Now let's switch to our final topic, and, and we don't normally talk about just raw politics, but I think it's important because it's beyond that. Uh, our Attorney General, Luther Strange, got bumped up to be senator with Jeff Sessions moving on to attorney general. That opens up a spot in, in state government. What are just your thoughts about all that? Well, it's, it's definitely a domino effect. Uh, you know, I, I've always thought Luther would be the, the U.S. senator. Uh, I'm not sure I would have advised him to take it in this fashion. Uh, I think he probably could have won an election in, in 2018 and, and taken that seat. Uh, but it does now open the door for uh, the attorney general in, in Alabama. Uh, and that's going to be a tremendous appointment. And again, the appointment is made by Governor Bentley. Uh, and so we're going to have to see how this all plays into the to the investigation that was started. Uh, you know, the optics of the whole thing just don't look good. Uh, and so I hope he picks an attorney general that will will uh, will be outside those optics uh, and will carry on the investigation that's there. And whether it, whether it be a uh, you know a interim. Uh, investigator or whatever it takes to make sure that that happens to make it look like it's been been taken care of in an appropriate manner and it and it does need to be taken care of we've had oh, a tremendous amount of corruption in the state of Alabama and and it has been corruption also in the Republican Party it's not just the Democratic Party we know about Speaker Hubbard uh, we know all those things that happen and so it's important for me to make sure that whatever we do is done appropriately and we need to start building that trust back with the Alabama people that understand that we're we're doing things right and we're doing things for them and not for personal gain. Well I know for a fact there's many many folks who would like that job. It's a prestigious one, an important one. Uh, so it'll, the governor will have a, a large pool to draw from if he wants to, I'm sure of that. Oh he'll have a, he'll have a large pool. Uh, you know he'll have several DAs, he'll have people in the AG's office uh, he'll have several senators, I'm sure, that would, would, would jump at that opportunity. So it's going to be interesting to watch. I think we'll find out uh, within the next week or two. Uh, and it's just going, again, it's politics, and we have to watch and see what it's, what's going to happen. Yes, sir. Well, that's week one. I'll see you again in a week, and we'll talk about week two. I'm sure it'll be interesting. Thank Sounds you, Senator. Good. See you next week.